Hey there, so I have a tutorial today that I know you are going to love. This is something that a lot of people ask about, and it is how to create an image, uh, an image mock-up using Canva. So here we go. We're gonna pretend we're doing an Instagram post. So I already have selected that size, so just a square image. And I'm gonna start with a stock image. If you have your own, you can use it here, or if you've, you know, you've purchased one, or you have a, a stock membership site, Go ahead and use your photo here. We're gonna look at the photos, some of the photos that Canva has in their um, library. If you are on the paid plan like I am, you get access to everything in their content library. So all of their photos, all of their elements, everything. So one of the perks to having the paid plan. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just type in mockup here. It's cool because you can even sort um, if you have a certain like color thing you're looking for or orientation. So if you're doing like an Instagram stories design or a Pinterest pin and you want to look for just vertical, you could do that. Um, and then of course, since we're already on the pro, we don't even have to sort by that. Um, oops. So let's take a look at what we've got. As you can see, there's tons and tons and tons of images. I mean, I could probably just keep scrolling. Uh, because we just specified, or we didn't specify what type of mock-up we wanted, we're getting everything. So we could say iPhone mock-up or laptop mock-up, iPad and whatnot, and then you can get more specific results. But um, I just wanted to show you what the results are that you get here. Um, some other things that I want you to know when you're creating a mock-up in Canva is that you want a device, uh, that is going to be straight on. It could be at an angle, like, you know, like this, see that, um, <laughs> but you want it straight on. You don't want something that is like, for example, this one here, whoops, because in Canva, as of right now, you cannot do, um, edit photos to be in a, like a perspective. Um, so you can't click and drag, like if I were to put in a screenshot here, let's see. Another perk to the, the pro plan is that you can have folders, so you can organize all of your, your stuff in there. But say I wanted to put my website homepage, I can't, like in Photoshop, I can't click and, I was holding the shift, that's why I was getting weird. Um, I can't drag to match those corners. You can't transform and skew images like that. So, so no weird perspective images. Um, you want something straight on. And then the other thing is you wanna be careful of having anything obstructing the screen that you're uh, mocking up on. So you don't want like a plant, like this one here has a shadow. So obviously that shadow is gonna go away when you lay something over it. Um, you know, a hand, like if it's a phone, you don't want someone's like this one, well, this is also a weird perspective. So this one wouldn't really work because there's a finger covering it. So you want something that's nice and clean, preferably straight on, but you can do it if it's like at a, a rotated angle. Sometimes your lines won't always line up, but um, we'll give it a try. So let's do, let's pick one of these here. Oh, which one did I wanna do? Let's go with this one. So I'm gonna click and drag this image over. If you wanna reposition the image, you just double click it and then you can drag it left, right, up or down if it can. You can zoom in and whatnot. So, all right, so now you can see we have our image. Now let's take our screenshot that we have. I'm gonna go with, I'll just say we're gonna do this like Pinterest one. Oops, I'm just gonna click it and it's gonna pop it into my design. Um, I can move it around. As you can see, it doesn't snap it in like a um, like a s smart object type thing, but um, we can rotate it. Try and get it as best as we can. Move it over. I always recommend zooming in. I'm doing um, on my Mac command, command and the plus sign, and that zooms me in. Um, you can also do it down at the corner but we're gonna just try and drag it into this white. So as you can see, even though this is angled and it's flat on, it's still slightly off. So we might have to 
just try and get it as close as we can. So I'm just using my arrow keys to stitch it over. I feel like it's a little bit easier to do it that way than to try and click and drag it. So we're gonna bring that side. We're gonna keep showing that little bit of black. See, I can't quite get that rotation right so it's even all the way around. You can just get it as close as you can. Let me back it up so you can see. Obviously this top, not looking so hot. Bring it down. So my other solution to that would be to um, try and almost make a new um, black box behind there. So let's go ahead. I'm going to hit R, which makes a rectangle. Let's zoom it out. I'm going to make it black. Oops. All right, make it black. And then I'm going to try, I'm going to size it to that screen. And you'll see what I'm going to do here is basically create an optical illusion. So oops, I'm going to go ahead and move. I also recently discovered that if you want to click something that's on a lower layer, you can hold down the command um, or the control button if you're on a PC and keep clicking um, on that layer and it'll like click you each layer down. So now you can see I'm, my back image is selected and whoops, of course I let go of it. So then I could slide it and move it over. The reason I want to move that out of the way and I'll bring it back is that um, Canva has like some smart guides and they like to click onto um, lines and things like that. So when I have that one under there, it wants to click to those lines and I don't want to quite do that yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this black box that's just slightly bigger than the existing line that's already there. So it's probably good. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to, I have to make it easy. I'm going to lock that layer. So I'm just going to, I have it highlighted. I'm just going to click this lock button. All right. Now I'm going to bring this one on and we're going to bring it forward. So click on position forward. So now we're in the front. And now we will easily be able to line these up. Oops. I'm going to move that up. It's all like just fudging it around a little bit. So it's still a little bit goofy, but it's a lot better. I think that might be pretty. Sorry, <laughs> I'm like obsessive about it. So let's back it up and see how we look. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, so as you can see, we got it all pretty well lined up. Now it, it's not giving us that weird, like, angly thing. <laughs> um, say I keep messing with it. <laughs> just got to get it just right, you know? Okay, whatever. I'm just going to leave it. All right. Now, um, the other thing that I do just to kind of finalize and make it so it looks a little more realistic is sometimes I need to play around with the either the transparency on the image that I put on there, the screenshot, or the, um, oh, let's bring that down here. Um, I just double clicked on that image and shrunk it back in there. Um, or I'll, I'll adjust some of the um, photo settings. Oops, I screwed it up. What happened here? So um, sometimes, see what I mean about it snapping? Um, so first, because I have that black background on it now, I can adjust the transparency. Maybe I'll drop it 10% and maybe I'll put it on to 80 maybe. 
I gotta be sorry. I gotta be highlighted on it. I was on the background. Bring it back a little bit so you can see like that. That might even be too much. So there you go. Or um, the other thing you could do, like when we had that white background on it, um, is to adjust the uh, whoops, photo photo adjustment. So you could drop, you know, drop the brightness down just a smidge. Um, it's easier just to type it in. Or you know, if you wanted something that is brighter, you know, bring the contrast up. Whatever you want to do to play around with with that, um, just to make it more realistic could do that. Um, one last quick tip. If you need to grab a screenshot from a device like an iPad or your phone or things like that, <laughs> I discovered finally a new way of doing it from my desktop. So I'm not having to take it on my phone and then airdrop it over to my computer. Um, you may already know this hack, but I'm going to share it anyways. So say you're on your page that you want a screenshot of, whether it's your website or I'm going to just use Pinterest here for an example. I'm on Chrome and I'm going to click on this little red arrow at the top, go down to more tools and then over and across to developer tools. And then if you don't have this page here, there's, um, it'll probably look like that. You can, you know, grab fonts and things or whatever if you're on a website on this area, but we're going to click on this toggle, toggle device toolbar. It's the little devices there. So if you click on that, you'll see it resized my screen and you can change it to the different devices that you want. So say you wanted, you know, like an iPad or um, let's see, responsive. It's kind of cool. So you can play around and do, depending on the device that you have the mock-up of, um, like if you have an iPad Pro, makes it bigger. Um, you could put in your measurements that you want. And then what I do is I'll just do a, um, a screenshot where instead of screenshotting the whole thing on my Mac, I hit command shift four, which will, oops, I'm going to say I want the phone. Um, I wish it would resize it. So sometimes it does resize it so that it's responsive. But anyways, for the example, command shift four, I get this little um, crosshair and then I could just click and drag to the size that I want. You'll see it just pops up. Um, and then I just drag that into, into Canva. So there you have it. Um, that's how you create a mock-up, a simple mock-up in Canva.